There are many tricks of the trade when operating dozers. This video will discuss ways to make your job easier, safer, and more efficient. First, the operator must understand what's to be accomplished. There are several questions that must be asked before starting any job. Where is the top? Is the top daylight? What is the slope ratio? Are there any benches or grade breaks in the slope? Does the slope have a lot of excess material on it, or is it close to grade? Look over the excavation area and notice ridges, ruts, hard rocky material, soft alluvial material, etc. This will help eliminate the elements of surprise when working on sloped terrain. Be aware of basic safety and efficiency considerations as you work. Never operate equipment faster than you can safely control it. Slope boards are creating a finished product. Build it right the first time. Never take too big of a cut with a slope board. It'll pull the dozer into the slope and create a low spot in the slope which is very difficult to remove. Slope boards cut best with the bottom two to three feet of the board. This is the point of maximum sturdiness. Finally, plan all moves ahead. If the top is the back of a pad, the edge of a parkway, or has a finished grade, that grade should be cut first. The grade checker works in front of the dozer, identifying how much to cut at each point along the top. Once the top is on grade, the dozer operator needs to bench the excess material to expose a rough slope the length of the slope board. To begin this technique, tilt the dozer blade level. Then bench the excess material on the slope to the approximate finished grade, down below the top of the slope about one full length of the slope board. Continue this bench the entire length of the slope. The operator uses his judgment on making sure not to undercut the slope during this process. Roughing in the slope involves several steps. First, set the slope board to the desired slope ratio. Then, facing the slope, start from the left end of the slope and place the lower left corner of the slope board next to the inside lower corner of the bench. Finally, begin roughing in the slope. Use first or second gear about half throttle. As the dozer and slope board fill up with material, turn the dozer away from the slope and lose the excess material beyond the bench. Back up to where you left off and begin again. Watch the left corner of the slope board. Keep it at the inside lower corner of the bench or catch point of the slope. Watch the upcoming material. Look for humps and holes and anticipate the corrections. Use the tilt control and steering frictions on the dozer to make any corrections. Continue this process the entire length of the slope. With the help of the grade checker, the operator now establishes the angle point for the top of the slope. The emphasis here is to make the angle point at the correct place. The operator is not trying to cut the slope. Set the dozer on the bench with the left bottom corner of the slope board at the catch point of the slope. Lay the slope board a little flatter than the slope to be cut. For example, if the slope ratio is 2 to 1, lay the slope board down to 2.5 to 1 or 3 to 1. Using the first or second gear, fully depress the decelerator to idle the machine. This gives the operator more reaction time and improves control. Cut the top of the slope to grade by using the upper portion of the slope board. Use the grade checker to stand out approximately 20 feet ahead of the slope board, motioning into, away from, or hold that line to the operator to help cut a neat top of slope. A neatly started top of slope reflects the rest of the slope. Grade the complete top of slope. Once the angle point has been established at the top of the slope, the correct angle for the slope can be cut. We are now officially cutting the slope. This is usually done with the dozer sitting level on the bench. About one full length of the slope board should be below the top or the previously finished section. The top part of the board should be about a foot above the last grade checker's hub. In this case, it is the top of the slope. If the slope has a lot of excess material on it, more than four tenths, it's more productive to position the tractor on the slope and use the dozer blade to remove the bulk of the material from the slope. This can be accomplished by using these techniques. Climb the dozer up the slope. Place the right corner of the dozer at the lower inside corner of the bench and the left corner of the dozer near the top. Use first or second gear. As the dozer fills with material, turn the dozer away from the slope and lose the material onto the bench. Back up to where you left off and begin again. Continue this process the entire length of the slope until the grade of the slope is within four tenths. Then, using the corner of the dozer, push the excess material off the bench and re-establish the toe of the bench. It's advisable to use a grade checker when establishing the top, toe, and slope ratio of the slope.
Grade checkers can locate any hubs or markers used to establish the top of the slope and help to identify the top of the slope in between the hubs or markers. Remember, only build it once. During the rough-in phase, shape the slope about two-tenths above the finished grade. You are now ready to cut the finished grade. To begin sloping while sitting on a bench, you start at the beginning of the slope. Set the dozer flat on the bench with the lower left corner of the slope board at the toe of the bench. Adjust the slope board to the correct slope ratio, then begin trimming the slope. The proper angle for the slope is established by cutting with the bottom part of the slope board. The grade checker walks in front of the dozer and communicates to the operator the specific amount of cut necessary to bring the slope to grade. Hold the left corner of the slope board at the toe of the bench. Hold the top portion of the slope board brushing over the previous pass that established the top of the slope and watch ahead of the slope board for humps and holes. Anticipate the corrections. Use the dozer tilt control and or the slope board tilt control and steering frictions on the dozer to make any corrections. As the slope board trims and fills the dozer blade with excess material, turn the dozer away from the slope and lose the material beyond the bench. Back up to where you left off and begin again. Continue this process the entire length of the slope. To continue bringing the slope down, start using the right side corner of the dozer blade to push the excess material that is creating the bench down at the proper slope ratio. Create another bench down the slope about three-fourths the length of the slope board. Do not allow the tracks of the dozer to run up on the finished slope. Work parallel to the slope. As the dozer fills with material, turn the material out, away, and down the slope. Do not allow any material to spill out of the left side of the dozer. This could result in material spilling out onto a finished slope. Establish a bench about three quarters the length of the slope board down the slope. Repeat the slope cutting procedures previously discussed, roughing in the slope and finishing the slope all the way down the slope until the final toe grade is achieved. Sometimes hard material pushes the slope board away from the slope. In this case, don't try to steer the dozer away from the slope. Add down pressure to the slope board with the slope board control. Slightly turn the dozer into the slope and allow the slope board to cut up the slope. Allow both tracks to give the machine traction. Also allow the lower portion of the slope board and corner bit of the dozer to move up the slope towards the hard material. Both of these areas of the machine have a better chance of cutting out the hard area. Remember not to cut too far up the slope. If the hard area of the slope is long and can't be completely cut out in one pass, it may be necessary to make a number of similar passes cutting up the slope, each pass moving forward. If a large rock protrudes from the slope's grade plane, the rock needs to be removed. Use the tip of the slope board to undercut the rock. Also use the tip to pop out the rock. The hole left in the slope will need to be filled. Use moist material from the bench or drag excess material from the slope. Overfill the hole and track walk the material in the slope to get compaction. Then trim the slope in the normal manner. After the hard material is removed, the dozer can be relocated to the bench parallel to the slope. A pass can then be made trimming the slope with the top portion of the slope board, removing the excess material that was previously pushed up the slope. When the material texture is inconsistent, such as soft material mixed with hard areas, it may be necessary to turn the dozer perpendicular so it's facing the slope. Then, with the lower portion of the slope board set under the hard spot, cut the hard spot up the slope to remove it. Be careful not to undercut the slope. Remember not to cut too far up the slope. After the hard spot is removed, the dozer can be relocated on the bench parallel to the slope, and the pass can be made with the top portion of the slope board removing any excess material that was moved up the slope. If the slope that's being trimmed ends at daylight, no excess material must fall beyond the daylight point. Approximately one dozer length before the dozer reaches the daylight, turn the dozer and the slope board away from the slope and lose any excess material over the bench and down the slope. Then locate the dozer at the end of the slope facing perpendicular to the slope. Climb the dozer up the slope and back drag the excess material off the slope at the proper slope ratio. Be careful not to undercut the slope. 
It may also be necessary to locate the dozer on the bench parallel to the slope. Move the dozer to the end of the slope, lay the slope board on the slope, and back drag the slope with the serrated cutting edge of the slope board to match the rest of the slope. To trim a high slope that has minimum excess material, use the slope board control and tilt the slope board down level with the dozer blade. Then at the far left of the slope, climb the dozer up the slope. The top left hand side of the slope may have to be back drug to get started. A grade checker is recommended any time a slope is started. This will help reduce the chance of undercutting the slope. Align the dozer so one half of the slope board is hanging over the end of the slope. Using the whole slope board will pull the machine to the left as the machine is dragging down the slope. After this is done, use the slope board control and lift up the slope board about halfway. Continue back up the slope, turning parallel to the slope as the machine gets closer to the top. Rough in the slope to within two tenths of grade using the dozer blade. Keep the left side of the dozer blade about one foot below the top of the slope to keep from undercutting the top. Continue this to the end of the slope. After roughing in the slope, move back to the far left side of the slope. Lower the slope board level with the dozer blade. Locate the dozer down the slope far enough so at least one foot of the slope board is above the top of the slope. Begin to trim the slope. Remember, first or second gear and low throttle. It's important to cut the slope flatter than the predetermined ratio on the first pass. Concentrate on making a neat top of slope. Then cut the slope to the proper ratio on the second or third pass. As grade on the slope is made, move down the slope roughing in grade with the dozer and finishing the grade with the slope board. Rough in the slope three quarters of the length of the slope board. Brush over the previous pass that's on grade with the top portion of the slope board. Let the lower portion of the slope board trim the slope. Hold the right corner of the dozer slightly above the ground. As the slope is brought down, there may be enough accumulated excess material on the slope to create a bench. If so, use the previously discussed sloping procedures, roughing in the slope and finishing the slope. If not, continue this procedure to the top of the slope. Pioneering can be a challenging and sometimes dangerous task. The operator should be experienced with operating a dozer, and only the most experienced operator should pioneer in steep hillside areas, especially in rock. The machine that is to be used for the task should be in good working condition, with the tracks in good shape and properly adjusted, as access for a maintenance vehicle can be limited or impossible. It is important to remember that in a pioneering operation, bigger is not always better. In a very steep area, it's usually easier to use a smaller machine that's lighter and will require less footing to maintain stability. It is always more productive to pioneer from the top of the cut and work your way down the hill, that way, gravity will assist you in carrying larger loads of dirt with each pass. However, in steep terrain, with no access to the top, this may not be possible. Even though the procedures are similar, it should be noted that different operators may differ slightly in the way they accomplish the same job. Before beginning a pioneer job, the operator must first know what he needs to accomplish. Some of the things to be considered are, what is the purpose? Are there any natural areas? Where are the daylight stakes located? If you're pioneering a road, as in most cases, what will the road be used for? A haul road or vehicle access? You must know how steep the road can be and still allow vehicles or equipment to climb in and or out. Also, know how wide to make entrances, exits, and turns for the equipment that's to be used there. Park the machine in a safe place and walk the area you intend to start. Look over the terrain. This will allow you to get an overview of the best way to approach the job. Notice uneven areas or low-lying areas. These are potential areas that collect leaves, branches, trash, and so forth, which can pack up tracks and reduce traction. Large rocks can also reduce traction and contribute to an operator losing control of the machine. Also be alert for wet areas that could contain underground springs. Project an imaginary line from the starting point at the approximate angle down or up the hill that you want to build. Then determine a target point at the other end. Choose a marker at the end point, such as a rock, a bush, or place a lath there as a reminder. Once beginning, start the cut about five feet above the proposed road grade. This allows you to generate the necessary dirt to sidecast and establish your footing without undercutting your road grade. 
tilt the dozer toward the inside at about a five degree angle and start forward benching into the hillside. This will keep the dozer leaning to the inside slightly and shift most of the weight away from the edge. This creates a much more stable condition. You want to load the dozer with as much material as possible and then turn toward the outside edge. Lift the dozer slightly and cast the dirt over the side, creating a footing thick enough to support the machine. You may have to carry several smaller loads to accomplish this and be sure your outside track is at least one foot onto solid ground and at a slight angle to the outside edge. You should never run parallel to the outside edge when you're closer than about three feet since the full weight of the track could cause caving and allow the dozer to fall over the side. Continue benching the inside and casting to the outside until the desired width is established. After the pioneering is completed, make a final pass to smooth out any rough areas and leave a safety berm on the outside edge of the new road to prevent a vehicle from going over the side. When pioneering in rocky material, the operator should use the procedures similar to those previously discussed. However, the machine must be operated at a much slower pace using first gear and very little throttle. Rock provides little or no traction for the track type of machines. Rock can also cause severe damage and injury to an operator if proper caution isn't used. When benching into a material, it may be necessary to turn into the bench at a sharp angle, using the corner bit primarily to penetrate and then lifting up the dozer to break the material loose. After breaking loose a substantial pile of material, refer back to the instructions previously discussed about side casting the loosened material over the outside edge. There are several signs that a slope has been trimmed to daylight poorly. One is when you see shrubbery growing several feet inside of the contact line. This shows that slough has been pushed past the contact line and will have to be removed by laborers or by backhoe. When you see shrubbery that is discolored from the surrounding vegetation, that's another sign that slough has been pushed past the contact line and new vegetation is growing through it. Erosion will also occur when loose material has been left on the slope. All of these problems will have to be fixed at extra cost by the contractor before the job is finished. You can tell when a slope has been properly trimmed to daylight by noticing clean, defined edges between the cut and the contact line. Also, there will be no loose material left on the slope. The kind of equipment typically required for this type of operation is a small finish type dozer, CAT, D5 or smaller, which will generally have a lower center of gravity and provide more stability while working on a slope. Usually, a smaller machine will take a higher level of skill to operate it efficiently. The operator must have a keen eye to see grade while in the seat. Fill slopes are usually overfilled between 5 tenths and 1 and a half feet above grade. They should have grade stakes running from the toe to the top, 50 feet apart. The grade stakes should have color-coded high cups on them to show off finished grade. Before grading the slope, Moisten the slope to be worked properly. Draw marks on the side and back of the dozer blade one and two feet above the cutting edge. They should be visible to the operator in the seat. These marks, along with the high cups on the slope stakes, will be used for reference points while grading the slope. Simply line the one or two foot mark on the blade with the one or two foot high cup on the grade stakes. If needed, place any markers on the top or toe of the slope in between the stake rows to help grade to actual top or toe. Sometimes eyeballing a grade on a stake in between the stake rows on the slope helps, especially in variable slope conditions. Look over the slope that is to be worked. Notice any obvious humps and holes in the grade prior to grading the slope. Remember to be aware of compaction in this situation. There are two common methods used to trim a fill slope, starting at the top of the slope and starting at the toe of the slope. Starting at the top of the slope, pushing the excess material downhill is the most productive method. To achieve grade on any surface, the material must be within a tolerance. Grade tolerances are different for different types of work. An example, grade for base grade on the street may be plus or minus two hundredths, and grade for a finished slope may be plus or minus five tenths. Make sure to check the job specifications. Position the tractor on the side of the slope at one end of the slope. Don't undercut the top of the slope. The use of a grade checker may be necessary. Also, match the reference points established on the dozer blade with the corresponding hike-ups on the stakes. 
Keep the machine at a slow pace. It may take several passes to get the slope to grade, depending on the depth and hardness of the material that's being worked. During this process, the dozer blade may fill up with material. If so, turn the machine downhill and lose the excess material. Back up to where you left off and begin again. Return to the starting end of the slope. Move down one equipment width and repeat the previous step. It may be necessary to take out the first stake row. Grade can still be maintained by setting the high side of the dozer on the existing grade established on the previous pass and matching the reference mark on the low side of the dozer to the corresponding hike ups on the next stake row down the hill. Begin cutting along the slope stakes using the hike ups and reference marks on the back of the dozer to help achieve the grade. Keep the machine at a slow pace and be sure not to undercut the slope. Use the slot dozing technique to grade along the stake row from the top to the toe. Position the tractor on the side of the slope at the next stake row over. Repeat the previous step on both sides of the lath. With the dozer blade facing downhill, use the slot dozing technique to remove all the excess material off the slope in between the stake rows. When this is complete, remove the first row of stakes. Blend it into the slope that was just made and any existing slope on the other side of it. It may be necessary to climb the dozer up the slope and back drag the slope. This would be done for cosmetic purposes only. It may help to blend everything together. To avoid the tracks from being clogged, keep the material on the slope moist but not wet. Track walk in the whole finished area of the slope. This will seal off the slope, hold in moisture, and help eliminate erosion. For more information on track walking, refer to grading fill slopes elsewhere on this video. Continue working across the entire fill slope. Starting at the toe of the slope is usually a slower process due to the fact that all excess material must be moved uphill. Remember the information from the first section? Usually there's work to be done below or at the toe. In this case, it would be all right to set the machine on this area below or at the toe and begin grading at the toe of the slope. Position the tractor parallel to the slope at the toe or below the toe if possible. Excess material may have to be turned and pushed up the slope as the toe is being established if there isn't a place below the toe to lose the excess matter. Position the tractor facing the slope at one end of the slope. Begin cutting along the slope stakes. Use the hike ups and reference marks on the back of the dozer to help achieve grade. Keep the machine at a slow pace. There will be a lot of corrections to be made as the dozer starts to climb up the slope trying to maintain grade. Use the slot dozing technique to grade along the stake row from the toe up through the top. Position the tractor facing the slope at the next stake row over. Repeat the previous step on both sides of the lath. Back the machine next to the slot previously graded. Use the slot dozing technique to remove all the excess material across the slope in between the stake rows. When this is complete, remove the first row of stakes. Blend it into the slope that was just made and any existing slope on the other side of it. It may be necessary to back drag areas of the slope that need cosmetic changes. To avoid the tracks from becoming clogged, keep the material on the slope moist but not wet. Track walk in the whole finished area of the slope. This will seal off the slope, hold in the moisture and eliminate erosion. Continue this process across the entire slope. This is a procedure that's done to a slope to help seal in moisture, eliminate erosion, and develop ground surface compaction. Track walking isn't always mandatory. The slopes on the project may be required to be vibrated and grid rolled. Moisten the slope before you begin. Remember, it should be damp, not wet. Begin at the bottom of the slope, approximately half a machine width from the edge of the slope. Walk the machine up the slope. Use low gear and about one half throttle so the grousers on the track don't tear up the grade. The idea is to let the tracks seal the material off. As the front of the tracks travel beyond the top of the slope, be sure to use the brake to stop the machine before placing the transmission into reverse. Not using the brakes could lead to problems controlling the machine if it starts to freewheel down the slope. Place the machine in reverse and proceed down the slope at the same speed that the machine traveled up the slope. As the machine travels back down the slope, cross friction the machine to slightly turn the machine about one half to three quarters of the track's width in the direction of the edge. Then straighten the machine out. Continue traveling the machine to or beyond the toe of the slope. Again, use the brake to stop the machine. 
place the transmission in low forward gear and travel back up to the top of the slope. Keep the machine traveling up the slope in a straight line. Repeat the previous process all over the edge of the slope. Slightly overlap the edge if possible. After reaching the edge, continue the previous process in the opposite direction to the other side of the slope that's to be track walked. Now, this slope has been tracked across one complete time. It may be necessary to track across the slope two or three times. It depends on the type of material, moisture content, size of the machine, and the final desired appearance as to how many times the slope needs to be tracked. Operating a dozer is a complex procedure, but following the advanced techniques detailed in this video, you should be able to perform in a safe and efficient manner and produce high-quality slopes from whatever conditions you find at the start of the job.